Well, you've likely heard that the cicadas are coming, right? After 17 years, we've been talking a lot about it. And while they're more of a nuisance really than anything, they can do damage to your trees. Today, the Morton Arboretum gave a tutorial of what we can do to save them. Here's Lexi Suter. The time to wrap your young trees and shrubs is right now. The cicadas are about two weeks ahead of schedule. That's because of the warm soil temperatures, and you'll want to keep your trees and shrubs wrapped for the next six weeks. We know physical barriers work. We know that if you put this barrier on the tree or the woody plant, it will be effective. Spencer Campbell and Stephanie Adams are two experts employed by the Morton Arboretum that say you should protect trees and shrubs that are two to three years old or less than two inches in diameter. They say a breathable netting is best. What any homeowner can buy at any fabric or craft store, it's a fabric called tulle. It's a synthetic blend, it's a polyester or nylon. And it's actually the same fabric that's used to make tutus. The 17 year cicadas have begun to emerge on the Arboretum's property. Soon the female cicadas will start laying eggs on branches, a process that cuts into the thin bark, resulting in damage that some trees may not be able to recover from. But once the tool is on and the trees are safe, then the studying begins. Science around cicadas is still emerging. You only get once every 17 years to really study it in this region. Besides being noisy, here's what we do know. They don't have stingers. They don't bite. Um, they're not going to harm people but they can cause damage to vulnerable and small trees and shrubs. Reporting from the Morton Arboretum, Lexi Suter, NBC5 News. So one reason why we are protecting and we're focusing on some of these smaller trees is that the the cicadas, uh, the females will lay her eggs in branches as small as about an eighth an inch in diameter up to about two inches in diameter. So these are the branches that have especially uh, thin bark. And so on smaller trees like the crab apple behind us that we just uh, wrapped in tulle, that's predominantly the size of the branches it has. And so that makes that trees the smaller and more uh, vulnerable to this kind of damage. So when you have trees of similar species, but they're very large trees, they have a lot more branches and especially larger diameter. So that's why they're less vulnerable to damage. And so it's really the branches and not the base of the tree that's where the people should be concerned about? So if the um, stem of the tree is smaller than two inches in diameter, it, it does have more of a potential. This tree is kind of right on that cusp of whether it could be damaged or not. Talk a little bit about how the netting can protect the tree or why it protects the tree. So you're looking for netting that's no bigger than a quarter inch across, because any bigger than that, the cicadas can climb through and defeats the whole purpose of protecting them. That size also lets moisture in and out. It allows sunlight to penetrate, to get to the tree or the plant when it needs it. Um, the reason we are using it is because we know physical barriers work. We know that if you put this barrier on the tree or the woody plant, it will be effective. So if you follow a few simple tips, you can protect all the trees in your home landscape and your neighborhoods. Yeah. So the fabric I use, or the horticulturist used this morning, and what any homeowner can buy at any fabric or craft store, it's a fabric called tulle. It's a synthetic blend, it's a polyester or nylon, and it's actually the same fabric that's used to make tutus. Um, and so you can go to the fabric store and get yards of the tool. Uh, it doesn't matter the color. Uh, right now, it's just a matter of protecting your tree. Can you talk about the emergence? You said um, they kind of started emerging. They're about two weeks ahead of schedule. Can you talk about the timeline and what people should be doing based off whether they're hearing them or seeing them all? Sure. Um, here at the Arboretum, the periodical cicadas have been emerging for the last week and a half. Uh, we found them uh, both out here in our landscape and also in our east woods. And so uh, we have uh, the, what you'll see in your home landscape or when you uh, look for them is actually what they're called chimneys. Uh, do you want me to have the physical samples or because I have the samples of this if you want to see it. Yeah. Okay, okay got it. But if you wouldn't mind describing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, may I hand that to you? Of course you may. Thank you. So the. Um, as the cicadas, nymphs, are emerging, they're digging up out of the soil and they're pushing all that excess soil up and out of their exit holes. And so this will accumulate on the soil surface. So it'll look like uh, a little blob or almost like a, a popcorn kernel of soil right on the soil surface. And if you take that and you tip it over, you can see a half inch um, 
diameter hole inside the chimney and then also in the soil, and that's where they're emerging from. And uh, what is about them makes it stick? You know, like I, I found like little, like you said, kind of like a popcorn kernel size thing. Yep. So um, the soil, as they come out, the reason why you have the chimneys in our area um, and why they're able to kind of stick together is that we have very high clay soils, and so they just naturally stick to uh, stick to itself because of the particle sizes. Can you talk a little bit about the risk of not protecting your young trees? Like if someone just, you know, didn't do it, what's that risk to them? Will they die or will they get sick? What, what will happen then? We recommend folks protect any tree you could not stand to lose. It's cheaper to protect it than it is to replace it. Especially if it's a beloved tree, the best thing you can do is protect it with a fine mesh netting. And so the healthy middle-aged trees aren't anything that you need to protect? Or? Any tree that's over 17 years old has seen this once before. <laughs> so um, when we think about mature trees, they're more capable of surviving this stress event because that's all it is, is a stress event. So a younger tree or a younger woody plant it hasn't sustained this type of injury before and maybe not able to uh, manage that. So the more mature ones will be able to uh, survive the cicada event without any long-term damage. There may be some short-term impacts, things like flagging where some of the upper branches, upper, upper leaves may die back, but ultimately we suspect that they'll survive this event without any long-term impacts. What percentage of trees would you guess here at the Arboretum that you're going to need to do the netting with? So we're primarily focused at the Morton Arboretum on our young and vulnerable trees. So for us, those are plants, woody plants, that have been planted in the last two to three years and fit those size parameters that Stephanie mentioned. We're looking for two inch in diameter and smaller, they're more susceptible. Or if we have some very special trees at the Arboretum, maybe it's a one of its kind in the entire Midwest, or in, maybe in the country. Those are ones that we want to uh, have special focus on to make sure that we're addressing those so we don't lose something special in our collections. Are there, any, are there, like, cer sorry, are there certain kinds that they're not, the, the potatoes are not attracted to, like evergreens or anything like that? Yes. So on our website, the Morton Arboretum, we have a preferred host list. You can check out there. Now, it's not comprehensive because science around cicadas is still emerging. You only get once every 17 years to really study it in this region, okay? So, <clears throat> ultimately, trees that we know they do not like. They do not like cone-bearing trees or conifers, okay, which is different than an evergreen. An evergreen means green year-round. Conifer means the fruit is a cone, okay? Any cone-bearing tree, um, it's not suitable for cicada eggs because what happens is they'll, they'll use their ovipositor, they'll slice open, lay their eggs, and then it's got a lot of pitch or a sap that'll kind of exude the eggs out. So it defeats the purpose of having the eggs in that spot. So short answer, cone-bearing trees are not susceptible for cicada damage. There are ones that they like more than others, but ultimately the most important thing to remember is protect those trees with fine mesh netting if you want to protect it. And then, go ahead. I, was gonna say, I know we've talked about what cicadas can do for, for younger trees, but what are the benefits of these cicadas coming? Awesome. Yeah. So the benefits of the periodical cicada is that you have to remember that they are native insects. They are part of our natural ecosystem. And through their activities in the soil, they are digging and they're burrowing, so they're aerating the soil. They're contributing to our soil health and microbiome. And um, after they emerge, they will shed their exoskeleton, um, which we oftentimes see hang on the side of trees and plant, uh, buildings. And those will decompose as well as in about six weeks, they will die and they will also start decomposing. And as they decompose, you know, their bodies will also put nutrients and minerals back into our soil. And again, keep building our soil health. And is there anything, any like risk to protecting the trees? Is anything gonna change for them? Or is the material just basically the protective barrier and it won't have any other impact? <clears throat> Yeah, so the uh, protective barrier, so in this case we're using tool, um, the risk of putting the tool on the tree is that, um, you know, if the wind catches it, it could break some, like, flower buds, anything like that. And so, but you have to remember that that damage is just going to be temporary. It's going to be pretty small for this year. And so next year, once we don't have the periodical cicadas, that will... Um, uh, the plant will recover that damage. 
Um, while if we don't protect those trees, the damage that the female causes when she lays her eggs can actually cause branch and twig dieback, um, which is less recoverable. May I, can I add something? Can I add something to that? May I please? Um, no, my apologies. Hey, okay, thank you. Um, the more important consideration is using the correct material. If you use the wrong material, you can cause serious and lasting impacts on trees. So we're looking for fine mesh netting, bird netting, insect netting, no bigger than a quarter inch across. That's the most important thing to remember. If you want to protect your trees, that's the type of material you want to use. There's nothing else that we recommend to protect your trees. I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. If related to what I was going to ask, you also want something I assume to let the sunlight and water in, right? Yeah, so you want to use a material that breathes really nicely so it doesn't trap excess moisture inside of the netting and it also allows light to penetrate into the to the plant so it's still able to photosynthesize. You kind of alluded to this before, but um, <clears throat> since we've seen the chimneys and we've seen the holes in the ground, mm -hmm. how, like after seeing those in the typical four weeks, then when you can start expecting the noise or what's the timeline? So after the cicadas emerge, um, it's usually between it's approximately 10 days, between five and 15 days, that they, they will start mating. And so the noise you actually hear is from the male cicada. She, he has uh, kind of like a drum-like organ on its stomach that makes the noise that attracts the females. And so uh, we'll probably start hearing that in probably the next two weeks or so. And then shortly after that, the females will start laying her eggs and causing the branch damage. And just to be clear, the, the chimneys and the holes don't necessarily mean the nymphs have come out of the ground yet. No. So the if you see the chimneys, then they're certainly digging their way up. Um, and yeah, if you open that, you remove the chimney to see the exit hole. Sometimes you can actually see the cicada right there on the soil surface. Um, but yeah, they're certainly active. And we've been checking the soil temperature and actually digging into the soil. And they're between four and six inches in this, down in the soil right now. But anything in biology always has a gradient. So you always have early emergers and then you have ones that will emerge kind of late. Individual cicadas only live for about two to three weeks, but we're telling people to protect their trees and shrubs for uh, six weeks, four to six weeks, to, in order to capture that entire brood emergence and activity. And then I know there's the annual cicadas that come later in the summer, right? Is, the, is there anything that people should do for them, same thing, or is it just the periodical? Annual cicadas come here every year. They cause no lasting impacts on the trees in our community. So we do not recommend any protection for the annual cicadas. When should you start netting your trees? You can start netting your trees today. <laughs> You're gonna to wanna to leave them on your woody plants in your home landscape or in your neighborhood for approximately six weeks. Is there a moment that'll be like, or a day that'll be too late to net your trees? You can net your woody plants today. <laughs> yeah, net netting would be too late once damage has occurred. So even if you start seeing that damage, if you forget to do it, um, as long as you net it with before, say, early to mid-June, which is that six-week time period, your, your plant will benefit from it. I apologize, I was a little late. Um, sure. Can you, can you probably cover this up? Just tell me which, like, what the guidelines are for which trees you should be netting. Well, did you answer this before? Because I want to make sure it's the same here, man. So, um, so periodical cicadas do have a preferred hosts. And so we do have a uh, list of host plants on our website. You can uh, visit it and find that low. Uh, you can find that list of host plants at our website, mortonarb.org. But there are common landscape plants like crabapple, like the tree that we just netted. But it can also be birch, hickory, oak, maples. Um, it's a pretty thorough list across many different genera and many different plant families. But like the, the, the size of the plant? Oh, the size of the plant, yeah. So the periodical cicada, she can lay her eggs in branches that are two inches and smaller, all the way down to about an eighth of an inch in diameter. And so in smaller plants, that those are all the branches that they have, are those small, vulnerable branches. So you can take the same species and have an older tree, like even a matter of five years older, and they have many different sizes of branches. Therefore, they're less vulnerable to the long-term damage. How many are you gonna have to net here in, in the So the latest list I heard, um, which 
always keep in mind that the Morton Arboretum, we are a registered tree museum. So we have, we specialize in rare and endangered plants. And especially some of those plants, we don't know if they're hosts or not. And so I think the, um, the latest list I heard was about 500 different plants. So not just trees, maybe shrubs, bushes, flowers? Woody plants. Yep, so it can also be shrubs.